I have some incredible news to share with you today coming out of the Donald Trump New York sham trial. They're going to try to jail him for a new reason. I've also got some information about Biden and his economy. I've got some big, big news coming out of New York City that has me scared that we could see an absolute revolt of illegal migrants within the city. We're going to be going through all of that. So thank you guys so much for joining me and giving this video a like. I really, really appreciate that. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the news for today. New York City could have a massive illegal immigrant rebellion crisis on its hands, and thousands are told they will be removed from free housing paid for by taxpayers in luxury hotels. They are not taking the news very well. Israel announces they will definitely be attacking Iran in the near future. Alejandro Mayorkas has been accused of treason with new evidence coming forward as his impeachment papers are officially passed off to the Senate. Thank you guys so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out, so thank you guys so much. The Pentagon has just responded to claims made by people like me who suggested that Iran's attack on Israel was not carried out to inflict maximum damage. The reasoning I gave for this theory was that the attack was launched in Iran and they gave the Pentagon 72 hours of advance notice on what they were going to do. So any country with that much notice should be able to defend itself. Now, despite this common sense reasoning, Pentagon Press Secretary Sabrina Singh stated, we assessed that this attack was not some type of signaling or message from Iran. This was meant to really inflict damage, to inflict civilian casualty, but they failed in doing so. Uh, if that is true, then yes, Iran failed big time because nobody was killed and no civilian areas were damaged. But when you look at the telemetry of where the drones and missiles were headed, it was all headed for military areas, so there wouldn't have been any civilian damage. I believe the United States government is lying to us. I just don't know why. But again, it's now come out that Biden and the Pentagon were given a 72-hour head start on what Iran was planning to do. Now, as expected, Secretary Singh also flaunted the defense uh, military capabilities of the United States and Israel. She stated the fact that Israel shot down 99% of the missiles sends a strong, strong signal to the world that Iran is not the military power she projects herself to be. And while I agree that this feat is massively impressive, I hope Israel would be able to defend itself given weeks of notice and hours of advanced preparation. House Speaker Mike Johnson has finally unveiled what he's been working on for the past two months. In a shocking twist, Johnson is attempting to get a separate vote on Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, and the proposed TikTok ban. In his new legislation, each issue would be treated individually, which would may, mostly upset Democrats. Now, I think this is a wonderful idea. I've been saying that every bill should be a separate bill so that the American people know what's in it and also members of Congress know what's in it. Our government leaders, however, don't want us to know what's in these bills. If they did, they wouldn't bundle billions of dollars together create a bill that is 600 to 2,000 pages long, give members of Congress one to two hours to read it, and then pass the bill in the middle of the night. Am I right? I, I really don't think they want us to know what is in there, which is why they do these omnibus packages so that people like Nancy Pelosi and others can package their pork inside of these bills without you and me knowing what's inside of them. Now, Democrat Representative Adam Smith was pissed at Speaker Johnson. He stated, we've already waited weeks, and I also want to go on record as being deeply concerned about the convoluted process that the Speaker announced yesterday for trying to get that help to Ukraine. If they pull this together, maybe two months from now, we're able to figure this out. 
once it goes back to the Senate with all the additional provisions that the Senate has to sort its way through. That is basically boiling Ukraine to death slowly. Well, the United States isn't boiling Ukraine to death. It's Russia. And they shouldn't be dependent on U.S. taxpayers to give up all of our money in order to defend themselves when they're not willing to even seek peace when it's right on the table in front of them. Cowboy Rob says, a bill shouldn't be any more than two pages. Exactly. Just give us the cliff notes. Let us know what's in the bill. Put the dollar amount and then vote individually. That's how bills should be passed in America. Now, in regards to his own Republican Party, Representative Thomas Massey has joined Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene in her efforts to vacate Speaker Mike Johnson. Thomas issued a statement about Johnson, which read, he should pre-announce his resignation as Boner did, so we can pick a new speaker without ever being without a GOP speaker. He's worried that the Democrats will swoop in and take over the House and put Hakeem Jeffries in. Now, even though Mike Johnson is pushing for individual votes on Israel and Ukraine, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene still claimed he gave the Democrats their wish list. Now, I personally don't see a problem with this. An individual vote on topics, I'm telling you, it is the way that democracy should be done. How on earth can somebody know what's in a 2,000-page bill at 10 o'clock at, no at night and a forced vote at midnight. It simply cannot be done. I, I complained about this during the stimulus era, and I complain about it still today. It's absolutely a broken system, but they know it's broken. The problem is they know it's broken, and they choose to run the U.S. government in a broken system. It's all on purpose. All right, now over in New York, former President Donald Trump has continued to deal with a very stubborn Judge Juan Mershon in the hush money case. But before the trial can really start, an unbiased jury must be selected, which is proving harder to do than to talk about. So far, 62 out of 96 people have been cut. Six people have been selected to be on jury duty a teacher, a nurse, a lawyer, and others. Now, in reference to this insane cutoff, Axios News stated, the rapid disqualification of at least 50 possible jurors underscores the difficult reality of finding a dozen New Yorkers to form the jury in one of the most high-profile cases in U.S. history. Now, I want to know from you guys over in the chat, do you think that Donald Trump is going to get a fair trial? If you do, I want you to say fair, and if not, I want you to type unfair. I would definitely like to hear from you. That th This is going to take a long time to get these jury members because many of them are, are openly bragging that they voted against Donald Trump, that they hate Donald Trump, that they do not want him to win, that when he won in 2016, it ruined their lives. There is no way that he can get an unbiased and fair trial in New York. Unfair, 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 unfair. Okay, yeah, I, I agree with you guys. All right, now, in the actual courtroom, there are rumors brewing that Trump fell asleep again for a second time. I mean, I imagine it's an extremely boring situation in a trial he doesn't believe he should be happening. So, of course, he's going to allow himself to fall asleep. I, it wouldn't shock me if he actually fell asleep. Uh, now, uh, Maggie Haberman from the New York Times, she's the one saying that Donald Trump fell asleep. And now they're calling him Sleepy Don and saying he's too old to stay awake in a trial. He's too old to be president of the United States. So they're kind of using uh, what Trump said about Biden uh, you know, that if he's too too stupid or too uh, forget it, forgettable uh, to remember anything about his own life in the uh, top secret documents case, that he's too old to be president. So they're just throwing this back and forth. Now, as Democrats attempt to get revenge on Trump by dubbing uh, Biden Sleepy Joe, 
Uh, Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina has claimed that these trials have made Trump increasingly more popular among black voters. During an interview with Breitbart News, Senator Scott stated, there's no doubt that when you see a nearly 75% increase in black men wanting to support President Trump, that's not an insignificant amount of increase. Now, according to the data, black men are more and more shifting towards Donald Trump, while black women continue to vote Democrat at the exact same rate. Now, according to the House Select Committee on China, the Chinese Communist Party is using tax rebates and grants and other incentives to financially support and subsidize manufacturers that create ingredients for fentanyl. So when Xi Jinping came to San Francisco and met with Biden, he promised him that he would crack down on this because over 100,000 Americans have been dying every single year because of fentanyl poisoning. Now we find out that the Chinese Communist Party has been subsidizing the ingredient manufacturers to make more fentanyl to give to the drug cartels in Mexico to sneak into America and kill our American brothers and sisters. Will Biden do anything about it? No, absolutely not. He won't. Now, furthermore, this drug money is reportedly being used by China to purchase real estate in America. So they're selling us the very poison that's giving them the money to buy our real estate. A DEA State Department investigation that took place between 2017 and 2020 detailed how over 1,000 students from China came to America with a visa to deposit over $1 billion in drug money to give them the buying power to start buying up American real estate. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. We're literally giving them the money to buy property while killing our children. Our, our government is so stupid. We, we literally have the stupidest government in the world. Maybe Canada, I don't know. All right, now the news has been quiet on this massive story since Feb February 13th when DHS head Alejandro Mayorkas was impeached by the House for allowing the United States to be overrun by illegal migrants. Well, the impeachment is finally going to the Senate. These losers in office let this guy go without consequences for 60 days. That means close to another 500,000 people have snuck into the country illegally while the Senate did jack crap to improve our country. Many Republicans in the Senate say they want to see Mallorca's impeached. However, not a single Democrat has said that they will vote to remove him. Republicans will still push for the vote so that they can point out that 100% of Democrats voted for the United States of America to be overrun, and they can use that when it comes to the election cycle in November. Will it do any good? I don't know, but think about how many millions are going to come into the country between now and election day. It, it's millions, millions and millions of people. Now, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene took it one step further, as she usually does. She pointed out all the reasons why Mallorca's behavior is actually treason. It's not just impeachable, it's actually treason against our country. She said the Senate should impeach him, but that uh, they also need to label him as a treasonous person. Now, she isn't just saying this to get click, uh, to get sound bites and use clickbait. Because he's allowed nearly 10 million people to flood into the country. Now, Mayorkas has been linked to funding dark pools with NGOs. Now, that means dark money, off the books money, has been going to NGOs, non government organizations. These organizations all up and down Central and South America have been instructing people to vote for Joe Biden once they arrive in America. They are putting out tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of flyers all up and down Central and South America that says 
you're going to get into America because of Joe Biden. When you vote, you need to vote for Joe Biden. So this is election meddling. This is instructing people to break the law and illegally vote in our elections. This is why Marjorie Taylor Greene is saying he needs to be impeached and he needs to be labeled as a treasonous person. Let me know in the comments, do you think that this man is a traitor? It seems so. He's literally telling people, you'll be allowed into America because of Joe Biden. You now need to return the favor and vote for Joe Biden. This is election meddling. This is being a traitor. This is, this is treason. Remember when Mitt Romney said that um, uh, Tulsi Gabbard had committed treason because she questioned sending more money to Ukraine? Oh, gosh. Oh, I can't wait till Mitt Romney is booted out of Utah. I bet you he moves after losing his Senate seat. All right, now let me know if you agree with uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene or not. Mayorkas was connected to dark pools of money instructing people to illegally vote for Joe Biden once they break into America. This has been proven. It was in the Senate. It was uh, it was in uh, Congress today. You can go watch it on the internet. All right, now even this form of cheating, however, might not be enough. According to new data out today, the southern border and illegal immigration is the number one concern among independent voters. And independent voters is a larger voting block than Republicans and Democrats. So this group, this majority, their biggest concern is illegal immigration and a broken southern border. So Biden and his administration, his re-election campaign group, they've been banking on the fact that these independent voters care about Ukraine. But more and more, people in America are saying, we don't care about Ukraine. We don't even know where Ukraine is. And they've lost to Vladimir Putin. It's time to seek peace and move on. Quit taking our money. Quit paying for your pensions while our seniors get less money than illegal immigrants. So he's been he's been banking on the wrong topic, and I hope it means that he will lose independent voters' votes. Okay, now this is crazy. Things could get absolutely out of control in New York City very soon. Today, thousands of illegal immigrants surrounded City Hall demanding work permits and free houses after being told that they would be removed from their luxury hotel rooms. These taxpayer-funded luxury hotel rooms, they're saying, no more, it's costing too much, you need to get a job, you need to figure yourself out, or you need to leave the city. Now, again, thousands showed up at City Hall. The police were outnumbered, the employees at City Hall were outnumbered. These groups expect taxpayers to support their lifestyle now that they've arrived in America. They want to have the city continue to pay for their luxury hotel rooms, or if not, give us a free house, they demanded. We want a free house paid for by taxpayers. Now, in some parts of the city, Illegals are being told they have 30 days to find a new place or move out. The illegals are panicking. They're saying, we don't know what to do. We're not going to leave. You cannot force us out of our luxury hotel rooms. So what do you think is going to happen when they try to vacate an entire hotel of illegal immigrants in 30 days? Right now, it's believed that there are around 180,000 illegal immigrants in the city of New York. What's going to happen when 180,000 people suddenly find themselves homeless, foodless, and jobless? They're going to riot. They're going to panic. They're going to demand more free stuff. These people, are they're literally teaching each other how to get free money out of the government. They're teaching each other how to get free schooling for their children, 
how to get free food, how to get free hotels, how to use the stupid renter squatter laws in New York to steal people's houses. They're, 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 they're teaching each other how to do crime. Imagine 180,000 of these people, jobless, foodless, homeless. What do you think is going to happen? I, I'm, I'm worried for my fellow Americans in New York. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm asking you to just think about it. But this is what's coming down the pike. All right, now, some businesses that had to close and board up their business in New York City are now illegally running illegal migrant camps in New York City. They've filled old shoe stores with bunk beds, old mattress stores with cots, and they're charging $300 a bed. But you're not allowed to tell people where you live. If people find out about this, it shuts everything down. I mean, this is like, this reminds me of the Brad Pitt movie, Fight Club. The number one rule of Fight Club, never talk about Fight Club. So, so they're, they're literally taking over these empty businesses and then they are putting up, uh, they are putting up these illegal migrant camps and charging them $300 a bed. So the, the police and city officials say these cramped conditions break dozens of health and safety codes. This could lead to lice, mice, rats, and measles. Many New Yorkers are saying homeless shelters don't help the homeless. So we don't want hundreds of homeless shelters popping up in our neighborhoods. We, we don't want homeless shelters everywhere crowding the city. And who's going to pay for it? It's still going to be the taxpayers. It's the New York taxpayer that has to pay for this mess. So Letitia James and Mayor Eric Adams and New York Governor Kathy Hochul are putting New York in a very, very bad situation in an attempt to be kind to people who broke into the country. And I know that we could just say, hey, New York voted for this, but did they really? Did they know it was going to be this bad? This is why I think protesters in New York are finally starting to protest. They're, they're starting to say, hey, this is really crazy. You guys are putting our families at risk, our children at risk. Now, what's really crazy is thousands of these people today demanded a free house. They said, hey, if you don't give us a free house, the New Yorkers and Americans are racist. That's what This is what they said. You guys can look this up. So if we don't get our way and we don't get free stuff, that you're a racist. You're a racist for not giving us free stuff. Supporting freeloaders has nothing to do with race and racism and everything to do with the fact that I work 70 hours a week and pay taxes so you don't have to work? No. That is that is a broken system. That is stealing from the taxpayer to give to the freeloader. But that's what they want. That's why they came to America. They are literally told, you will get into America. Just vote for Joe Biden when you illegally vote. I mean, it's a scam. It's a total scam. These sanctuary cities are screwed. New York is screwed. Chicago is screwed. LA is screwed. Seattle is screwed. They took in all these people. 180,000 people are going to be revolting when they're told no more food, no more jobs, no more freeloading. Scary. All right, let me, let me switch gears. On Wednesday, new whistleblowers from the Washington, D.C. National Guard will testify before congressional investigators alleging that former President Donald Trump had requested their deployment on January 6th to help with the Capitol riot. However, they claim that Army Secretary Ryan McCarthy delayed relaying this order to the D.C. National Guard Commander William Walker by two hours. So for two hours, Trump was telling the National Guard, you got to get in here. And this person, 
me go back up. Army Secretary Ryan McCarthy delayed relaying the order to Guard Commander William Walker by two hours. That's what these whistleblowers are going to testify to Congress about. The whistleblowers also assert that their accounts were overlooked by the Democrat-led January 6th committee because it did not align with the committee's narrative and it would not have made for good TV. So <laughs> they destroyed evidence. They cherry-picked what they were willing to share. And this is one of the stories that was left out. But now they are going to be testifying to the public in front of Congress. Now, uh, it's been three years. Many of you maybe don't care about January 6th anymore. But uh, I, for one, want the truth. And these, these whistleblowers are saying that they were called in to break up the riot and that it was delayed by two hours. Unbelievable. Of course, the entire narrative was to blame this on Donald Trump and then link him to all of these crazy groups, groups that the FBI had been stoking for many, many months, groups that the FBI had infiltrated. Why? <laughs> so that Nancy Pelosi could make Donald Trump look bad. She's the one that rejected 10,000 National Guard. Maureen Bowser, the mayor of D.C., rejected 10,000 National Guard. And the National Guard, they're saying, we were ready to go and we were delayed by two hours. In fact, some of them, it says, plan to testify that they were in riot gear, sitting on buses, ready to go. We, we were ready to mobilize and were delayed by two hours. This is what they, they're saying that they're going to testify on Wednesday about. Okay, two final stories. New data out today shows that Donald Trump is trending towards taking the state of Virginia. That would give him 13 electoral votes he did not receive in 2020. Democrats are not happy about this. They've counted on Virginia for many, many years. And now it looks like it's trending towards going towards Trump. Lastly, I want to hear from you guys. We're only two days into the Trump sham criminal trial in New York City. And District Attorney Alvin Braggs has filed paperwork to have Donald Trump arrested and jailed. Why? To teach Donald Trump a lesson. Alvin Bragg says that he has uh, basically betrayed the court. He's in contempt of court and that he needs to be arrested and jailed in order to learn a lesson. <laughs> Do you guys think that they're going to jail Donald Trump? This, this is like the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Absolutely stupid. Wow, 2,900 of you have given me a like. Thank you guys so much. Did you guys know you gave one of my videos last week over 30,000 likes? Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate that. Let me know in the comments what you think. We're two days into the trial, a, a six to eight week trial. Two days in, they already want to arrest Donald Trump. Here's the other thing. The media is now saying... Sorry, I'm trying not to laugh. This is, it's not funny. But they're saying that Donald Trump is being accused of witness intimidation because he cleared his throat in court. <laughs> he cleared his throat and there's, he's trying to intimidate the, the people. He's trying to intimidate them. Wow. Unbelievable. So crazy. Wow, 7,500 of you are on with me live. Thank you guys so much. That's my news broadcast for today. I want to remind you guys that you are amazing. Make sure to check out my interview from earlier today with Sheriff Mark Lamb. He goes into detail about all the lies from Kamala Harris and Joe Biden about sneaking illegals across the Arizona border and also the Texas border. Hey, before you guys go, please give this video a like. 
hit that subscribe button. I want you in my community. Hey, I appreciate you guys. I love you. Stay amazing. And I will see you on the next video.